Hello, folks, and welcome back to English 332. In this lesson, we'll be covering Chapter 14, which is another one of these absolutely vital, critical topics. Everybody goes through this process at some point, uh, and so, some people are better at it than others, and some people, frankly, are better prepared for the situation. What am I talking about? Uh, the job interview process. We've, we've done the resumes, we've done the job uh, application cover letters, now we're up to the actual face-to-face, -face, or as we'll see over the phone or over Skype, interview process for your job. Uh, we'll be talking about that, that process, uh, follow-up messages, and uh, once you get that job, how do you succeed in that uh, brand new workplace when everything is so new to you? Uh, so a lot of good stuff, a lot of good practical information in this chapter. Uh, so without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so here's the learning objectives for Chapter 14. We'll be talking about the interview channels that you might or you may encounter. Uh, there's a lot more going on these days than just the traditional office uh, across from the desk interview. Uh, we'll be talking about strategies uh, for successful interviewing, uh, preparations you can make to improve your odds of getting the job. Uh, what do you do actually do during the interview? Uh, we'll look at some common interview questions and really... Uh, uh, this one and 14.6, how to prepare for less common interview types. I think these are the really vital parts of this, so I'll try to uh, make sure we slow down at those points and uh, dilate in on those, those uh, objectives. Uh, we'll also cover what to do after the interview, and then once you get your, uh, your first job, how do you flourish in your workplace. It's a lot of great stuff. All right, so there's a little overview of what the em employers expect you to do. Uh, first, they expect you not to be just doing this one inter interview or applying for this one job. I mean, they probably know that you're applying to several. Uh, they also expect you to follow the instructions to the letter. And so we kind of been over that last time with a lot of these uh, job applications these days are on, on a website. Uh, but they might also give you instructions for your uh, where your interview is supposed to be and, and what to bring and so on. Uh, taking one or more tests... Uh, so again, depending on the type of job it is, you might take some kind of a uh, test to see what you qualify for. And uh, be approved by the team that you'll join. Um, provide samples of the work you're applying to do. So this is another one. Uh, you know, if you're going for a programming job, for example, they might want you to bring in some, uh, some code. Uh, if you're doing writing, a writing-related job, uh, they might want you a writing sample. And it's pretty common sense, sensical stuff. So <laughs> the key, though, is to know what do they expect. Uh, if, you, if you're curious, you could always ask. Like, what am I? What should I bring to the uh, interview? All right, some different interview channels. Now we just had one of these uh, uh, job fairs on campus, and there were lots of uh, uh, employers there doing sort of on-the-spot interviews with people. Uh, so how can you prepare for something like that? Uh, they talk here about the protocols and, uh, and the expectations, and these would vary, of course, depending on what type of job fair it is. And the common sense, the easy <laughs> thing to do would just be to contact the people putting on the fair, uh, you know, career services, whoever it is, and just ask them, uh, you know, what should I wear, uh, how, sh how should I conduct myself, what's the procedure, etc. Uh, provide good details and professional stories about your work. Uh, so this is where you'll need to, uh, you know, think about your job experience, maybe go back to that resume cover letter. Uh, pick out some key details from it. Uh, if you want to emphasize something like how hard, hard of a worker you are or that you, <laughs> you collaborate well, you know, you want to have some specific little stories in mind uh, to be ready to tell those, uh, to show off that or kind of prove that you're a good collaborator. Uh, focusing on just the three to four selling points, so you don't want to try to cover everything in your resume. Uh, you know, just sometimes the less is more. Let's go back, think about what are my really my three big points, the, th the three most attractive things uh, to an employer. Maybe it's your technological skills. Maybe it's your communication skills. Uh, maybe it's that you're uh, really good at organ organizing your time. You know, it's going to de depend on you and your personality. But uh, the key is not to have uh, 12 points. 20 points, uh, but just the three or four. And some more channels. The phone interview is probably the, this is uh, one that I'm, <laughs> I am kind of dread. <laughs> I'm not really good on a phone. I, I don't feel like I'm, it's a separate, it's a, it's a very sp specific skill set. 
you know, and some people are better on the phone than they are in person and, and so on and so forth. But um, it's a lot cheaper, obviously, just to call you uh, than to have you, not to mention convenient, just to call than to have you come to uh, where the job is, especially if you, it's, it's a long ways away. And now they sometimes will just use the phone interview to narrow the list of candidates. Uh, the idea here being that it's just another step, right? You, you've done the, you submitted the resume, you made the first cut. Now they're doing phone interviews, see if they can narrow that list. So that's sometimes it. You might still need to come in later uh, to do a face-to-face -face interview. But sometimes this is it, uh, the phone interview. Uh, the, one of the keys with this is to make sure they can understand you, uh, speak distinctly. And I always say that you want to speak a lot more clearly in these situations than you do normally. So you really want to make a point of uh, enunciating your words, making sure you're loud enough. Uh, you don't want a bunch of noise in the room or try to do this uh, <laughs> you know, outside. <laughs> you know, find a quiet place. Uh, treat the interview like an in-person interview. Yeah, so even though it's on the phone, you can't see the person, uh, try to imagine that person sitting across from you. It might not even hurt to uh, put a picture there or <laughs> you know, be looking at a poster. I don't know. Uh, just whatever you can do to kind of get yourself in that mindset of seeing a person. And I even say, uh, I think they mentioned this in the book too, uh, you know, go ahead and smile, a smile just like there we're sitting there. You know, make all your usual hand and facial gestures. Uh, yes, they can't see it, but somehow that transfers over. Uh, find a quiet private location. We kind of covered that. Again, sort of common sense, but sometimes you can't help this. You know, maybe you've got a dog that's barking. Uh, you have some young kids that are making some noise. You know, so you want to try to minimize that as much as possible. <laughs> Make sure your phone works. Yeah. Make sure that thing is fully charged if you're doing the cell phone. Uh, they say you probably should use a landline, but uh, you know, good luck with that. <laughs> At the very least, though, make sure everything is uh, working. It doesn't hurt to do a little test phone interview uh, before the real thing. And again, focusing just on the three or four selling points. Uh, don't feel like you need to tell them your life story. You need to go into uh, you know hours of detail per question. You know, they, they kind of want to keep these things moving along at a fairly steady clip, especially if they have uh, you know, ten worthies to do today. All right, then we have the video interview. And this is probably what I'm most familiar with as a YouTuber. You know, I've interviewed, I don't know, hundreds of people this way. So I know a little a little bit about it. Um, I like uh, the video interviews. I feel like it's a lot closer to a face-to-face -face interview. You, know, you can see the person's face, see their facial expressions. And that uh, just seems a lot more personal to me than just doing a phone interview. I'm a lot more comfortable with it. Uh, but your mileage may vary. Uh, but anyway, what are some tips for doing these? They say prepare a video. That's very, uh, very sensible. You just record yourself uh, giving a little video interview uh, for practice or just for fun. What you, what you want to do is just kind of develop a comfort level around uh, being on camera, not being too self-conscious about it. And the, the only way to get there really is just to practice, prepare little videos. <laughs> you know, sometimes I have students when I'm doing these in my other classes, I'll, I'll just have them, I'll just say, just, you know, say the ABCs um, or recite something you have memorized. Uh, just, just anything uh, that, so you won't be self-conscious, you'll get a little more familiar. And then later we can work on, uh, you know, spon responding spontaneously to questions. Yeah, so pr uh, practice answers ahead of time. <laughs> uh, I, I honestly, I think there's probably something to be said for uh, not obsessing over the practicing. You know, I've done a lot of uh, interviews with people where I can tell that they basically have uh, drilled these answers in. And, and you can see, too, with politicians on TV, it almost sounds like it's a word for word, the same answer, <laughs> same same exact answer they gave to another question. So you can I think you can a little, almost psych yourself out by too much practice. Uh, but it certainly doesn't hurt to at least go through it a couple times. We'll talk about the typical sorts of questions. And uh, really, I think the main thing with this process is you don't want to get too uh, worked up and feel like you need to have something carefully memorized and, you know, get too, again, being too self-conscious. Uh, you might come across as a robotic almost. or <laughs> uh, They can tell that you just have the stuff memorized. It's not as effective. Uh, capturing your best performance. 
So again, so a lot of times we're not conscious of things, especially if you haven't ever heard your voice really or seen your cell phone video. Uh, you might have all kinds of little uh, annoying ticks, what they call them, you know, little hand uh, things you're doing with your hands or <laughs> uh, holding your head a kind of a weird way. Uh, just all weird sorts of winking that people can do. Uh, you just never know what yours might be. Uh, so if you record yourself, just in the comfort of your own home, you can use your phone usually just to make a little video and then watch it and see, well, you know, look, I'm uh, I'm doing this weird thing with my finger or my thumb. <laughs> I shouldn't do that. <laughs> but you might not even be aware of it, see, until you've recorded it and watched it uh, being thorough. Yeah. Uh, participating in video conferences. Let's see whether they have any good tips for this. Uh, same stuff, preparing a video ahead of time. Uh, what they're talking about here. And sometimes it won't be a, uh, I guess what they're talking about here is two different kinds of video interviews. Uh, this first one, you record the video ahead of time, sounds like, and then you just submit it. Uh, with this one, it's live using something like Skype, uh, where, uh, you know, it might be just you and one other person, might be a whole panel of people. Uh, but this could be maybe a little more nerve wracking because you don't have that option like you do here uh, with the first one to just deleting it and doing another one uh, so you'd want to practice this get some friends go to career services uh, the right place does these you can say hey, hey can i can, can you set me up with somebody to do a little practice uh, video conference you will know, be happy to help you with that uh, what you don't want to do is wait till the actual interview and then for the, be, be loading this stuff up for the first time never tested it i don't know what you're doing uh, keeping answers under two minutes. He has a very good tip there. It gets uh, really tedious to hear somebody just going on and on and on. <laughs> you can always uh, they, the, you can always let them say, hey, can you here, go on a little bit more or can you give us a little more detail on that answer? You know, they'll do that if they feel like you haven't uh, given it enough time. Now, you got to be careful, though, with the opposite. I don't know if they're going to get into this other point, uh, but you don't want to be too quick with your answers either. So you should be savvy enough to tell whether it's just a yes or no question or something that's going to require more explanation, kind of a they're kind of setting you up for a little uh, conversation. Uh, being prepared for technology failure. Oh, yes. I mean, you never know what can happen. Uh, the thing might just suddenly freeze on you. Uh, that can that often happens. Um, you know, maybe everything was working perfectly just an hour ago. <laughs> Now nothing's working. <laughs> uh, there's all sorts of things. Your electricity could just go off. Uh, so you just have to be prepared for that. Uh, don't get too uh, uh, freaked out if that happens. Just kind of roll with it. Um, you know, usually they'll be understanding, especially if it's something that you have no control over. Now, some strategies for interviews. And these are just some questions you can ask yourself. Uh, a lot about a lot of this is rhetorical, and by that I just mean uh, thinking about the, uh, you know, how to put your best face forward, how to be, uh, how to be persuasive, how to be convincing, and a lot of that uh, rhetorical training involves putting yourself in that other person's shoes, or trying to trying to almost pretend like uh, you are the person that's listening to yourself, if that makes uh, any sense. So you could ask yourself this: What is it about yourself? Or what about yourself do you want the interviewer to know? And so what are these qualities that you really want to get across? And that's, I can't answer that for you, right? You have to think about it yourself. Uh, what disadvantages or weaknesses do you need to minimize? So maybe there's something on that resume. You know, it's probably going to come up. Maybe you don't have very much experience. You know, they might have put on their desired, uh, you know, 10 plus years experience and you're brand new. Yeah, yeah, I might have zero experience. And so that's something you would want to think about ahead of time. Like, what if that comes up? You know, how can you make it sound like it's not such a bad deal? Or, or maybe it's, uh, you haven't been, uh, uh, maybe it's been a long time since you've done this kind of work. Anything like that. Uh, what do you need to know about the job and the organization to decide on a job offer? You know, this is a good, a good question to ask too. Kind of from this other perspective. Uh, uh, you might have uh, two or three job offers uh, all going on at the same time. And, you know, I don't know, which one do you take? <laughs> well, if you knew this, going into the interview, it might help you uh, ask the right questions. 
again, thinking about what if it did come down to like two or three different job offers and I was trying to decide uh, whether this is the one, uh, what would be those little factors? You know, and again, I can't answer, answer this for you. You have to think about your own interest, your own situation. And some uh, final research for this preparation, obviously, uh, read as much as possible. Oh, what, what do you read? Uh, website, that should be a no-brainer. If you want to apply to the, uh, oh, what's uh, some of the local companies here? Uh, I think Electrolux might be <laughs> going out of business. But uh, let's say Mayo Clinic, whatever it is, uh, probably Gophers even has a web page you can go to, look at it, see what you can glean uh, from what's there. Uh, but also what's not there. Uh, sometimes it's you can learn about uh, the stuff that they don't put on the page or uh, that, you know, maybe that would be something you could uh, contribute. Uh, going beyond Google, um, Facebook and Twitter, again a lot of these companies have Facebook pages. You can get on see the uh, see what they're talking about there. Same thing with Twitter. Uh, you can also see what other people are saying or sometimes employees, uh, current employees there. Uh, newsletters, these might be a little hard to get a hold of sometimes. Uh, maybe that's on the website. Uh, maybe if, once you go to the office, if it's possible to go to the office beforehand, the company, you might find one of these and look it over. Uh, annual reports, and uh, again, something that might be hard to get hold, a hold of, you could try. <laughs> uh, and then the trade journals, uh, this would be more just the industry at large. Uh, most jobs will have a couple of magazines, basically, or professional journals. Uh, they're going to be incredibly boring to anybody that's not part of that profession. Uh, but for people that are part of that profession, they're very valuable. A lot of information there. And sometimes they will talk about the different companies, maybe mention that particular one you're applying to, and you can learn a little bit about what's, you know, sort of the, uh, uh, the inside baseball on what's going on at that company. Very useful. Uh, the second one, probably the better course of action, just to ask people you know about the organization. If you know somebody that works there, uh, invaluable stuff, you can you can actually ask them about their interview. So, oh, you uh, you work at Gophers, right? Uh, <laughs> you know what was that interview like? I'm about to go up for an interview myself. I'd like some info. Uh, it's a good way to get to know more. Or you could somebody that's been working there for many years. You know, uh, what are some of the things that are going on? What are they looking for? Uh, what are the problems, etc.? You know, if you had it to do all over again, is this the job you would want? Would you want to work there? Uh, find out who will interview you and research them if possible. Uh, so sometimes you know this from just looking at that job ad, they'll mention the name. Uh, it might be a matter of calling up or um, sometimes they don't want you to know. <laughs> uh, but if you can find out a little bit about this person, uh, that can be really useful. Uh, you know, find out what what are their passions? What are their hobbies? What is, what's their job title? And that might give you a little insight into the kind of questions they're, they're liable to ask you. Then we have the elevator speech or the elevator pitch. And you'll hear this, you'll hear, hear career people, uh, career services and people like that talk about this all the time. And the idea is you're, you know, if you meet, if you're, you know, you go to this building, go to this company, you're on, you see the person that you want to make an impression on getting on the elevator. The elevator's going up to 50th floor or whatever, two minutes. Uh, you've only got that little period to make an impression on the person. What can, it's kind of a, a little bit of a frightening concept, right? But it's not doesn't literally have to be an elevator. It's just the idea of being concise. You're thinking about two minutes. Uh, what can you really say about yourself in two minutes? Uh, what should you say? What should you not say? Uh, what are those, again, those two to three points uh, that you really want to bring out and, and be practicing this speech and you know take out a stopwatch take out a timer uh, get a friend to sit across from you and say you know tell me when to go and give me two minutes and just let me <laughs> start talking to you <laughs> uh, use these uh, carefully selected details to sound convincing and i just say in general even though it says uh, why you're a good candidate uh, don't forget it this shouldn't be all me 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 look how great i am i'm it's the me show starring me uh, featuring me in all the roles. And, <laughs> you know, this really should be more about uh, what you can do for the company. Uh, so the more you can think about that, uh, the better here. You know, you're really the person that can come in and solve this problem or, or take advantage of this uh, scenario. 
Uh, you've got this new system. I'm really good at that system, etc. Uh, helpful in a variety of situations. Yeah, you know, the group interviews. Yeah, you know, if you got three or four people gathered around interviewing, uh, you definitely need to be concise because they usually each person there wants to have some uh, questions they want to ask and different uh, perspectives they want to bring. So uh, being concise will really help with that. Uh, receptions with company employees. Right, they can bring you there, and you might be meeting a lot of people all at once, and it's nice uh, not to you know, have to always be uh, <laughs> sort of on the spot, like not knowing what to say. Uh, oh, my God, I don't know what to, what, how to answer that. Uh, you got this little two-minute thing prepared. You can adapt it on the fly. makes you a lot more comfortable. Uh, also, just in those brief one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations, again, you might be feeling repetitious if you've gone through this, you know, however many times <laughs> throughout the day. <laughs> Uh, but that's a lot better, again, than just not knowing uh, what to say. Uh, preparations, uh, travel planning. Uh, so sometimes we don't think about these sort of logistical issues. Uh, maybe this job is in the Twin Cities and uh, you're going there and it's, it's some part of town you're not familiar with. Or maybe you're not familiar <laughs> with the cities at all. Uh, you haven't really thought about, well, where am I going to park? Uh, when I get there, where actually, where actually is this building? You know, maybe you can use GPS. Sometimes that doesn't work out so well. Uh, it's, it's good to scope out the place a little bit. So at least that's just one less thing on your mind, right? You know where you're going to park. You know where the building is. You know how to get to the office. Yeah, you know how much time you'll need to get there. And for for God's sake, you know, take into consideration the time. If it's uh, <laughs> close to rush hour. Uh, especially if it's a big city, uh, you might as well add a couple of hours onto this even, at least an additional hour, because this place could be just a, a nightmare to get to during uh, the rush hours. Uh, otherwise, it might be just fine. Yeah, leave times, uh, margins for unexpected events, traffic jams, uh, a broken elevator. You know, there's nothing worse than you got this high stakes job interview and you're late or you're, you're concerned about being late so you're r rushing you're <laughs> kind of breaking into a sweat <laughs> you're shaking I mean you just don't you do not want that uh, unnecessary stress so it's, if you show up way early you got like half an hour to kill or even an hour to kill you can always just walk around outside uh, uh, review your materials you know that, that's far preferable than <laughs> to break your neck getting there uh, plan the transportation and schedule if flying. Uh, so sometimes they'll do this for you, and again, depending on the type of job. But if you've ever flown before, you know sometimes that can be unpredictable as well. And it's not enough just to get to the town or the city. Or, you know, that's just an airport. You'll also need to have, have a car rental, maybe, or somebody there to pick you up, or if you're going to ride the bus. You know, all this stuff has to be figured out beforehand. And here's one that everybody fixates on, <laughs> what to wear. Should you wear the suit and tie? Should you wear the formal dress? Uh, should you wear, uh, you know, should you try to cover all your tattoos, uh, body, uh, you know, jewelry, etc.? <laughs> if I hear all sorts of different opinions. Uh, but I think this is a pretty good, a pretty good one. The meet the interviewer's dress expectations. So uh, I guess that's, it's going to depend on where, what kind of job it is, right? And what do people normally wear? Uh, that do that line of work. It'd be a little silly if it's some kind of construction job and you show up in a suit and tie. Uh, they might think you're unqualified. <laughs> you, know, you know, look, that suit's going to get messed up on, you know, half an hour into the job. Uh, you know, what, what are you doing? <laughs> and, you know, whereas you could flip that uh, in reverse, depending on if it's this office job. And now some of this stuff, too, I'll tell you this. Uh, when they start saying make conservative choices, uh, traditionally a dark suit is, is most common. Uh, a lot of times people will say, well, what about if I don't, what if I'm not a conservative, you know, and, and what if I'm, you know, don't fit the stereotypical uh, office look? Uh, <laughs> that's just not me. <laughs> you know, I would never wear a suit, ever. Um, well, you know, again, think about, do you really want to work for this company? Uh, why put on a big show? If that's not who you are, uh, you know, there's, there's that factor to consider, too. You know, if you like uh, if you like tattoos, you like uh, a lot of jewelry, earrings or, or whatever it is. And, uh, you know, maybe this is not the right job for you if they're not OK with that. You know, I think that's a, something to consider. 
it's not always about just being a conformist. Uh, you need to remember <laughs> you know, who you are. <laughs> uh, are they ready for you? Let's see, research the organization's culture if possible and uh, dress a step above. Yeah, so this is not saying you want to show up looking uh, sloppy and unkempt, obviously. Uh, if it is a type of place where everybody just wears uh, shorts, T-shirts, and sandals, you know, you might just take it up a one notch, maybe do like a polo shirt uh, for that, and maybe some, uh, you know, not necessarily a suit and tie, but something just to cut above is usually what they say. Uh, comfortable, shine shoes in good condition, right? Uh, so again, all this stuff is pretty typical, the typical of the kind of advice you'd get. But I think you just want to keep in mind uh, it could change. There's no one-size-fits-all idea. Now, I do think it's important to show that you respect the interview, that you uh, you aren't taking the, it for granted, you're making some effort uh, to look your best, and I think that's really the key. Now let's see some other uh, attire. Uh, style here, conservative. <laughs> that kind of rules me out, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, wear understated jewelry and makeup. See what else they avoid perfume and cologne. Well, this is this is certainly a factor. Uh, I know sometimes uh, people uh, tend to overdo it with the perfume or the cologne. And if this is a small office, you know, much less an elevator, right? This could be overpowering. So you might want to tone it down, uh, at least in that. Uh, present flawless personal hygiene. All right, so make sure your teeth are brushed. <laughs> uh, I would just say bring, get some peppermint, some mints, a breath spray. Usually that's the big thing. Uh, nobody wants to be sitting right across from somebody with bad breath uh, when you could just pop a, a mint and not have to deal with that. Uh, so that's probably the, my biggest one there. Uh, nothing in your teeth, uh, something like that. <laughs> what is going on here? I guess they they don't like uh, they don't like her. I guess she's got too much. Uh, I guess they don't like. Was it tongue piercing? I don't know. You know, I I, I have to say again, I, I'm kind of against some of the stuff they're telling you here. Uh, I think you should just be yourself. You know, if you like uh, the tongue piercing, if you like the if you like that sort of more radical makeup look, good for you. You know, I, <laughs> you know, I wouldn't want somebody putting on this big. Uh, this big show, uh, feeling that they, they need to pretend to be somebody else. And and again, there's worse things to be. You know, if you desperately need a job and you have to conform, uh, that's one thing. Uh, but hopefully you won't be in that position. You'll have lots of different offers on the table. And you know what kind of work it is, and you're not in a major where you're expected to be a way that uh, you, you won't, you know, if they want to accept you the way you are, maybe you should pick something else. You know, there's lots of options, but it's <laughs> just kind of Matt Barton's take on it. Uh, I know when I was applying for professor jobs, I had some friends coming out at the same time. They looked about like I do. Uh, I remember one of my one of my good friends there had a big beard, uh, long, you know, big long hair. He looked kind of like somebody out of Duck Dynasty. And uh, when he went on the job market, he cut his hair real short, shaved off all his facial hair. And, you know, I just always felt kind of, you know, questionable about that. And it, it just kind of seemed like he was not being himself anymore. Uh, you know, if that makes any sense. Uh, I don't know how that affected his job search or not. But, <laughs> you know, I just kind of present myself as, you know, this is who I am. If you don't like it, uh, maybe this isn't the right uh, fit for me. All right, here's some uh, stuff about professional materials, you know, stuff you could bring. Uh, extra copies of the resume, that never hurts. Uh, sometimes you're in your, if you're in kind of a stressful situation, your brain can just turn to mush. <laughs> you don't even remember like, oh God, when what was the job I was doing uh, before this one? You know, you can just have these weird brain lapses. And so having that resume to look at can help. Uh, you definitely want to have something to write on. You know, a notepad and a little pen. It looks good, too. You know, somebody's giving you information. You're making notes. shows you're taking it seriously. You're, you're listening, practicing those active listening skills. Uh, copies of the portfolio. Uh, you know, again, that depends on the job. If it's some kind of graphics design job, uh, obviously, you'd want to have some stuff to show them. If it's a writing job, you've got some writing samples. Uh, yeah, the references. Who are the references? How, they, how can they get in touch with those? It uh, doesn't hurt. Uh, let's see, a low-cost briefcase will <laughs> carry these items. 
Yeah, so you could pick up a little briefcase, I suppose, uh, from uh, God, Gophers would probably have it. <laughs> Goodwill. <laughs> you know, it's, it's kind of funny to me, though, how it's so much cheaper to dress in business casual or, or formal attire than it is to wear uh, stylish informal clothes. I mean, you go to TJ Maxx, for example, and just maybe for, or, uh, for under 50 bucks, I mean, probably for 50 bucks, I could set you up with several uh, very professional looking uh, uh, shirts, ties, or formal, uh, you know, uh, dress wear of any sort, <laughs> nice shoes, <laughs> you know, and the, and the, the, st uh, the formal stuff is always, for whatever reason, really cheap. You only get expensive if you're buying like the, you know, $200 pairs of uh, tennis shoes and, and designer jeans. <laughs> That's a lot more expensive uh, than this formal wear, uh, for whatever reason. I mean, you can just, it's, it's unbelievable. You go to, uh, oh, what's the name of that? store, uh, not Shopco, uh, I'm blanking on the name, right here in town, <laughs> oh, I can't believe I can't think of it, I've been there so many times, it's like a little department store, it's not Kmart, or, uh, <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking about, <laughs> uh, anyway, those places, keep an eye out for when they have sales, and you can uh, go in there and load up on all kinds of, uh, you know, button-up shirts and whatnot, of course, you can always choose just to <laughs> Bring your backpack <laughs> with all the badges on it. <laughs> uh, interview practice. Put on the clothes you'll wear. That's right. So if you if you are going to go with a suit and tie, and go ahead and put that on and practice some. It, basically a dress rehearsal because uh, you don't want to be uh, too focused on that, too distracted by that during the actual events. Uh, practicing everything. Yeah, entering the room. Now this can be a big one. And just the way you walk into the room, right? You want to walk in. Uh, you don't want your head down looking at the floor. Uh, you don't want to look uh, <laughs> nervous, <laughs> kind of cringing like. You really want to walk into that room, big uh, bright smile on your face. And I always like to imagine, hey, look, there's my best friend sitting there. I haven't seen my good old chum in been, uh, many weeks or months since I've seen him. Uh, there he is. You know, you just kind of put yourself in that mindset. And like, wow, it's good, so good to see you. You know, your eyebrows <laughs> go up. You have that genuine smile, a little warmth. Uh, just kind of pretend, uh, almost like a an acting uh, exercise, right? But uh, that can transfer over. Yeah, the shaking of the hands. Uh, not everybody can shake hands, obviously. Uh, it's forbidden uh, to some. Uh, but if it's not, if it's permitted, if you can do it, fine. You know, shake their hands. Make sure they're okay with it, obviously. And there's a whole etiquette to this, you know, don't do if you're, if you feel like you're sort of a tough person, don't feel like you need to crush their hand. <laughs> Make sure your hand is dry, not sweaty, you know, all that sort of thing. Uh, practicing sitting down. Uh, okay. <laughs> I guess you don't want to uh, fall down somehow. Uh, answering questions. This is probably the big one. Uh, so again, career service is great for this. But, you know, you should never just do this stuff cold. You know, if you don't have anybody else uh, to help you, go to career services here on campus. Tell them you want to do a mock interview uh, and just get some practice with this. It'll make a huge difference. Answering out loud is much harder than answering in your head. That is uh, very true. And so even if you're kind of silently going through the questions and answering them, that's a lot different than when you have to say it. Uh, use video equipment if available. Uh, so I'm pretty sure they have this at the right place. They probably have it at Career Services too, but uh, you could say, uh, yeah, could you record this mock interview so I can look at it later, uh, see where see where I went wrong? Uh, that could be a huge, uh, huge help to you. All right, so let's look at some customs, uh, some behavior. <laughs> My God, hey, if you don't know this, you know, I, <laughs> I wonder, but... <laughs> Yeah, if that interview is at 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, make sure you're there. Uh, again, if it is at 5 o'clock, you know, that's rush hour. They probably wouldn't do that to you, but you'd want to make sure you had a couple extra hours to get there, at least an extra hour. Uh, but whatever it takes, you don't be late. Uh, the act of listening, we've covered this. Don't make it all about me, me, me. You know, listen to what they're telling you. Listen to how they're wording things and uh, put it back. You know, make sure you answer the question 
that they ask. Uh, listen to carefully how they word the question. Make sure you understand it before you try to answer it. Uh, don't monopolize interviews with lengthy monologues. Uh, I think they said in the book to pay attention to the body language. Uh, usually you can tell when somebody's getting a little bored, they're kind of ready to move on. They're fidgeting a little bit. <laughs> they stop writing things down and they're just kind of, <laughs> eyes are starting to glaze over. You know, just cut it off and say, we can come back to that later though. Uh, you know, this is what you could say, right? Say, oh, you know, I feel like I've gone on a long time with this question. Um, I can I can go on, but I'm also comfortable if you just want to move on to the next question. I, I see you have a list <laughs> there. <laughs> um, you know, if it's okay with you, can just move on. And then, then they can say, you know, no, 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 please continue. Uh, or they might say, oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> Matter of fact, I've got 12 more questions. <laughs> uh, never say anything bad about current or former employees, including schools. And this is a, so common. You know, I just, I can't emphasize this enough. Just don't complain, uh, especially if it's something that nobody can do anything about. If it's, I always say, don't complain about any problems unless it's something you've solved. Because <laughs> otherwise, you just look like a complainer. Uh, nobody wants that negative energy. Uh, they don't want to be around somebody dissing everything because they, they're probably thinking, well, that person's just going to turn around next time and start, start dissing me. You know, and it seems like as a teacher, as a professor, it seems like uh, I'm always dealing with these students who sit right in the front row and they start complaining about everything from the homework I assigned. Uh, to the reading, you know, how boring they thought the reading was, uh, or it might, might not even be about me, it might just be about the other professors there. And, you know, I hear, this. I don't know if they're not aware <laughs> I can hear them, <laughs> uh, but it just, it doesn't do them any favors, right? Uh, it just makes me think less of them as a student, and I certainly think that's some, not somebody I would trust, uh, have a little low confidence in them if they're saying things like that. So really, just just keep it to yourself. <laughs> you can all you can wait till you get home and tell mom or dad all about it. Uh, but just keep it to yourself. Don't tell your teachers, your person interviewing you about it. Uh, don't say anything bad about anybody uh, if you can help it. And this is another uh, this be enthusiastic be enthusiastic tip. Yes, uh, great. Be enthusiastic, but don't go, <laughs> don't overdo this. <laughs> hey, uh, I'm so enthusiastic. Ah! Uh, you know, they don't want that. Um, you know, and I've seen this. I, I've seen people just get a little too carried away, like they're, they're, they're playing it up too much. <laughs> uh, so you want to be enthused, but you don't want to seem uh, ludicrous about it either. Like this is the best job ever, and you're just so excited. And you've always wanted to work here since you were two. Uh, you know, save that. Uh, be serious. Uh, don't overdo it. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Definitely convince them that you want the job and you want to work there, <laughs> and you like the people there. You like the company, uh, but don't, uh, you know, like it, but don't love it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, be yourself, your best self. Let's see what else we have here. Uh, reviewing your accomplishments, knowing your self-worth. Yeah, exactly. What can you bring to the company? How can you show uh, that you have these accomplishments? You're not just telling them you're a good writer, but you've got something to back it up. Maybe you won a prize. <laughs> Maybe you made A's in all your English classes. <laughs> Maybe your teachers have told you things, uh, wrote comments on your papers. Anything is better than having no evidence. Okay, let's see. Remember these basics. All right, what do we have here? Uh, look at people when you talk and don't mumble. <laughs> and most people seem to be pretty good at this. Uh, some people, again, overdo it. You don't want to be like laser eyes uh, boring into them like you're trying to see into their minds. <laughs> that freaks people out. Uh, you know, you make eye contact and you look, you look at something else a while. You go back to eye contact. You, if they're talking, look at them. Uh, but again, uh, don't do anything that's unnatural. Uh, I think that's a problem here. If you get too self-conscious about things like this, you'll end up acting uh, strangely, acting uh, mechanically. Uh, don't mumble, right? So again, be articulate, be a little clearer uh, than you would in everyday conversation. Uh, sit up straight. Yeah, you don't want to be slumped over, looking bored. Uh, <laughs> should go without saying, but again, uh, sit up straight. Mind your table matters. <laughs> Yeah, I think they actually go into the 
into detail in the book about this. You know, I'm kind of laughing at this, but it could be a factor. You know, I don't know what your background is like, but, uh, you know, you, you don't want to uh, uh, come across as being, uh, you know, somebody with bad manners. <laughs> you know, you're eating before everybody's uh, ordered or their food's arrived, for example, uh, or you're using, I think they mentioned the different kinds of utensils, starting with the uh, outside in. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It's, it's all kind of... Uh, you know, I don't know what kind of job interview this is where they're taking you to a five-star restaurant. <laughs> Chances are, if you if you weren't that kind of treatment, you know which fork to use. Uh, but if not, you know, make sure it's you could go to a, a website, look for etiquette, and figure out what a salad fork looks like, and what the soup spoon is, <laughs> where the uh, all this kind of uh, stuff. And keep in mind too, this will vary from culture to culture. So if you go to uh, India, for example, very different table manners uh, than here in the u.s so uh, make sure you do your homework on that but again uh you're probably not going to be in the situation where you're, they're taking you out to a <laughs> five-star restaurant <laughs> but if you are come back to that book uh, look at those uh, sections now turn your cell cell phone off this is probably a more common one you know make sure don't put it on vibrate thinking that's going to be sufficient that's also a big distraction it looks terrible just turn it off or don't even bring it to the interview you definitely don't want that thing going off in the middle of the interview. Uh, let's see. Um, Non-messy foods. I guess we're still talking about this dinner, so. <laughs> okay. So I remember when I was applying for this job, uh, they took me to, uh, we had two meals together. Uh, one was on campus at Valhalla, and that was a buffet-type situation. And then uh, the other one was at the uh, place called Sawat D's. I think that's a... Uh, I want to say Indian or Thai restaurant and I forget what everybody else ordered but I ordered this foolishly ordered this um, super spicy dish it was, it was extremely hot with the spices <laughs> and I, I didn't want to not eat it or send it back I, I was kind of worried that might send the wrong impression so I like suffering through this extremely hot like volcanic uh, some kind of pasta dish noodles or something and i mean my nose was running and <laughs> my eyes were watering i was <laughs> drinking like six glasses of water uh, somehow i still got the job but <laughs> yeah, don't, don't do that uh, you probably uh you know try to find something my grandmother used to talk about it as date food right you had the date food uh, something that you're not worried about getting up something with gravy or a lot of sauce uh, like a lot of long noodles, you know, something like this. A sandwich probably be a better choice. <laughs> the last thing you want is a big stain on your shirt uh, when you're trying to do this interview. So you know, it's a good point to consider. Let's see. Look for signs of organizational culture. All right. So this could be just looking around, look at what's on the walls. You know, there's a break room. What does that look like? Do they have bean bags in there? Do they have televisions? <laughs> do they have sports posters? <laughs> uh, or does it look like a very formal place? You know, very snazzy furniture. Um, uh, you know, high tech look. Uh, you can learn a lot just by looking around at that stuff. Is it more of a wine? <laughs> the more of a wine culture, more of a beer culture. You know, maybe they don't drink at all. And they, if you order alcohol, they're really going to look at you like, whoa. <laughs> you probably want to know that uh, before ordering. I don't, I don't think they mentioned it in, in that slide, but uh, uh, they did say something about alcohol. You know, if they do take you to a place where there's wine, you know, I, and maybe the person, other people there ordering wine or champagne or whatever it is. And, you know, again, if you don't drink, I would just say don't, don't, that's not the time to start. <laughs> uh, if you do drink, though, and they're drinking, uh, just kind of follow their lead, I suppose. But, you know, by all means, don't have more than one. Uh, personally, I wouldn't drink at all uh, at any kind of uh, job interview. It just, uh, just doesn't seem smart to me. Yeah, note taking, record the following briefly during or right after the interview. Uh, who was the person that interviewed you? Maybe get their, their business card so you can look, look at that again. Because you might get home. Again, it's kind of the heat of the moment. A lot of stuff happening all at once. Uh, you can forget these things quickly, uh, especially if it's a panel. You know, you'll make sure you got everybody's name down. Yeah, they gave you advice. You definitely want to remember that. 
<laughs> what do they like about you? <laughs> yeah, any negative points discussed? Uh, so they might have told you some problems going on or some problems with your resume. You know, whatever it is, you want to keep that in mind. Uh, even if you don't get this job, even if this totally uh, doesn't pan out, if you make a note of this stuff, uh, that'll help you next time. Next interview, uh, you'll have this stuff ready to go, uh, be uh, better equipped to deal with it. Yeah, and if you ask them questions, what were the answers? <laughs> when you'll hear from them, uh, another big point, they might say, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> uh, not a good sign. Uh, they might say, we'll contact you in the next couple of weeks and let you know, or it might be a couple of months. You know, whatever it is, you want to keep it in mind so you don't end up pestering them, uh, asking, oh, when am I going to hear back from you? Hey, we told you it would take a couple of months. <laughs> uh, that's You don't want to be in that situation. So write it down. All right, interview sections, interview customs. Yeah, I was just thinking a while ago, uh, <laughs> talking about this dinner etiquette. I remember one incident came back to me when I uh, thought this was like buried, <laughs> deeply repressed. But I remember one time, uh, I don't remember if it was for a job interview or a conference or something. But anyway, uh, you know, I'm not a five-star restaurant kind of guy. <laughs> I'm more like, you know, more like a, a barbecue or, a, uh, you know, maybe a nice uh, brew pub, uh, something like this. But anyway, I did, I did end up one time at one of these five-star places and, I remember the faux pas uh, that I made was uh, it was uh, they had this sort of salad bar, a big salad bar, and when I sat down, uh, they said something like, uh, you know, help yourself to the salad bar, and so they just had a little metal plate on the table. I thought, well, that's I guess that must be for the salad. <laughs> so I picked up this little metal saucer, <laughs> went and put some salad on it, and got back and. Uh, when I got back, the uh, the server came around and they had like a little, uh, they had the salad plates there and some bread. <laughs> so that was the bread plate that I put my salad on. So uh, they didn't make me feel really embarrassed about it, but I could tell they're kind of like, you know, who's this guy? Uh, here he is putting the salad on the bread plate. <laughs> I had to go get another bread plate. <laughs> uh, you know, and that was the kind of uh, situations that you can find yourself in. You know, I don't know. I, I think probably even the best, most aristocratic you know, silver spoon fed folks. Uh, I'm sure stuff like that happens to them too, but it certainly doesn't hurt if you're in doubt to look around a little bit, uh, see what other people are doing and just imitate them uh, if you're not sure. Or better just to be patient, right, than to jump into anything and embarrass yourself. Okay, uh, let's see, uh, interview sections. Yeah, so the little opening, two to five minutes, they probably won't just jump right to the questions right off the bat. Oh, they probably want to yeah do a little conversation. How are you today? Uh, you know, how about this weather? <laughs> little things of that sort. Little chit chat, small talk. Yeah, easy questions. Uh, information about company. You know, they, they kind of want to warm up to you a little bit, right? Uh, then you get to the actual meat of the body. Ten to twenty-five minutes. Again, depending on the type of interview, type of job it is. Uh, answer questions that let you show and tell your strengths. Well, hopefully you'll answer all the questions, but <laughs> yeah, if you can spin it in such a way where it shows that, yeah, I can really do this, or yeah, I got some special skills in that area, great. Uh, deflect a question that probes a weakness that's <laughs> evident on your resume. <laughs> well, this sounds like what politicians do all the time, right? Yeah, so maybe in preparation for your job interview, watch a lot of uh, uh, political <laughs> political folks <laughs> on the talk shows and you can see how they deflect these uh, these questions so you know yeah so tell me about that time you spent in prison <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> yeah you probably don't want to dwell on that for 25 minutes right uh, maybe you can deflect that uh, you know get on get over it as quickly as possible so you can move on to, uh, to something else and I'm being a little bit facetious there, but, but you get the idea. And I know some, some folks really have been in prison, and this really might come up, so it can be a serious thing. Uh, ask questions uh, uh, when the opportunity arises. Uh, so this will happen just about every time. At some point, usually towards the end, they'll say, well, you know, we've asked you a lot of questions. You've been good. You've answered our questions, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, do you have any questions for us? And this is, it might sound like it's not a big deal. 
And you might be tempted to say, no, no, I don't have any questions. You don't actually want to do that. That makes you look bad. Uh, you want to have some questions prepared, and hopefully they'll get into this um, in the slides. If not, it's in the book, the sort of things you can ask about. Now, you don't want to ask something that's obvious or something you, that you could easily have found out from looking at the website, <laughs> for example. Um, uh, you want to be asking questions that, again, kind of go back to this, give you this opportunity to show and tell your strengths, right? Uh, so if you're good with technology, maybe the question can have something to do with, you know, their plans uh, for technology. Are they planning to up update the software anytime soon, for example? Are they planning to bring more computers in, uh, modernize something? Uh, you know, anything that would give you a chance, basically, to talk more about your strengths, that would be the ideal kind of question. Uh, watch the time get in your key points. Yeah, just thinking too with, uh, with this, this one about the opportunity. Uh, so I think I mentioned this last time, but moving from the Deep South, as in uh, move from Louisiana to Florida to Minnesota. So one of the questions I could have asked, I didn't think about this obviously at the time, but I could have just asked, you know, as somebody that's coming from the basically a tropical, subtropical climate, uh, what are what are some what are the, what do Minnesotans do for fun? You know what do they do? What what, are the, what is this ice fishing I, I'm hearing about? And <laughs> you know, do any, does anybody uh, you know? Could you tell me more about the just the sort of fun things people do? You know, that might actually uh, be a good question to ask to show I'm not intimidated by it or I'm not dreading this. I'm, you know, just just seeking some information. You know, some I'm already sort of picturing myself here. Uh, that, that might help. Okay, let's see what else. <clears throat> yeah, two to five minutes to wrap things up. Uh, summarizing those accomplishments and strengths again. Uh, expressing enthusiasm for the job. Yes, so really looking forward to hearing from you. Can't wait to start work. <laughs> uh, this all sounds great. You know, thanks for bringing me in. Yeah, what are the next steps? All right, now here's where the common interview questions are, and I do want us to, uh, you know, I'll stop and let you answer all these. Uh, hopefully I won't forget to do that again, but here's the questions that you'll most commonly get. And this is all true. You know, I've done plenty of job interviews from both sides. I've been the interviewer and the interviewee, and this is it. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about yourself. Uh, so again, you don't want to start, well, I was born, <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, just the stuff that's relevant to the job. How'd you get interested in this field? Uh, how'd you choose this major, etc.? Uh, walk you through your resume. So you should have experience doing this. Uh, why do you want to work for us? So you want an answer other than, because I need a paycheck. <laughs> no, no, no. What are some things about that company? And maybe, maybe honestly, you don't even like this company. You, you don't really want the job. Uh, you know, it's just you got to pay the bills. And that could be the reality. Okay. Uh, but now you got to think a little bit more rhetorically. You got to be a little savvier, uh, rhetorically speaking, than that. Uh, you want to have something prepared, something you've thought about uh, that you could say. You know, well, this I want to work for you because, you know, fill in the blank with something that's reasonable. Uh, maybe they've got some uh, new technologies there you like, or maybe you like the location. Uh, who knows? Maybe you think you've got a lot to, you can offer the company. Uh, what have you read recently? I guess that could come up. Uh, if it's something to do with the field, maybe, <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> uh, but maybe it's just a novel you've read. Uh, they mention sometimes they'll even ask about a movie you saw. Uh, okay. <laughs> you probably don't want to mention something uh, scandalous. <laughs> Uh, what are your greatest strengths? That's pretty common. Yeah. What are your greatest weaknesses? And they, they have some really funny ones in the book about this. You know, what is your greatest weakness, Matt Borden? <laughs> oh, well, uh, sit down because I've got to, I'm going to talk to you for hours about how weak I am. No, <laughs> you, know, you want to find something that's uh, not pandering like the old, oh, well, my, my weakness is I'm a I'm just a little too dedicated to my job. I'm a workaholic. <laughs> you know, you don't want something like this. So, uh, you don't want to come across again. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's got things they're better at. Uh, I'd probably want to pick something that I'm not terrible at, uh, that I could use improvement, and hopefully something I am working towards improving. Uh, maybe uh, whether that be 
some new technologies. Maybe you want to teach. You're not using a lot of technologies at the moment. Uh, you could say, well, that's probably my greatest weakness is I'm not really savvy with uh, uh, more advanced features of PowerPoint or D2L. Or, you know, I don't know a lot about this uh, D2L software yet, uh, but I'm, I'm interested in that. And I want to learn more about it, go to some workshops. <laughs> you know, something like that would be permissible there. Uh, you don't want to say, well, uh, you know, my, my greatest weakness is I'm addicted to uh, meth. Probably don't want to <laughs> use that. Uh, what questions do you have? Um, yeah, again, we talked about this. If you want to ask some questions, ready for them. Uh, see, kinds of interviews, behavioral. I ask you to. So, this is different kinds of interviews. I'm not really familiar with these. I never really heard of them before this book. Uh, so, <laughs> you probably want to read the chapter, learn more about this. But uh, in these interviews, they're less concerned about skills, I guess, and qualifications, and more just about your personality type. So this almost sounds like maybe if you were going for some kind of top secret uh, FBI or some kind of psych profile, it almost sounds like that to me. Uh, so they're trying to get more about your behavior, your personality than your, your skills. But you know, using writing to achieve a goal. So what, you know, talk about a goal you have achieved in <laughs> a small essay. <laughs> Tell us about a time you had to make a decision quickly. Uh, or talk about uh, working under a tight deadline. You know, what, what was that? Uh, like for you. Did you go to pieces or were, were you able to deliver? Uh, did, maybe you savor the challenge, right? Uh, taking a project all the way from start to finish. Uh, probes you to think about what you did and discuss what you would do differently. So one of the ones that I, th now that I'm thinking about this, that comes up is about collaboration and diversity. You know, those two came up in the uh, interviews that we just did with these uh, creative writing uh, teachers. Uh, we ask, especially the diversity, there was a question on there about, uh, you know, talk about a time uh, that you dealt with diversity, or uh, I forget exactly how it was worded, uh, but basically just whether they're, we wanted to see uh, whether they welcome diversity, or they, do they see diversity as an opportunity or as a, <laughs> a challenge or a problem even. And so that was one of the questions, and, and most people were able to respond quick, quickly enough talking about some uh, project they did or a class they taught, uh, a student organization they were part of, a trip they took even, uh, just something that showed that they had some cultural diversity experience. Uh, so that, that's kind of common, what you might expect. Um, and then the collaboration is real common too, because they want to see if you can work on a team. And what you don't want to say is, <laughs> I hate collaboration. Uh, I hate group projects. I always avoided them. Yeah, you're not going to get the job. <laughs> Even if you, real again, the reality might be, I prefer working alone. I hate other people. I, I, I just want to be shut up in a room. <laughs> I don't even want a window. I just want to be alone with the computer uh, doing my job. Uh, they don't want to hear that. Yeah, so, so. It's not too late. Uh, collaborate. <laughs> Join an intramural team. That's great. Any kind of sports are great for that. Uh, just something that shows you can collaborate. You can be part of a team. And you can put your ego aside. Uh, you can um, shore up a team. Uh, you got a good uh, spirit, etc. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Other interviews. Situational. Put you in a situation similar to those you'll face on the job. And so this might come up, right, to say, well, here's something that recently happened, you know, X, Y, and Z. You know, how would you have handled that? Or let's just say uh, one of your employees comes to you with this kind of problem. Uh, how would you handle this? And just they just want to see, well, well, maybe you don't have a good answer right off the bat, and that doesn't necessarily disqualify you. Um, so I think sometimes they want you just to be honest. You know, I say, I don't know what I would do in that situation. <laughs> that sounds very scary. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe they're looking for you just to be honest and see whether you'll just keep bluffing. You know, how much uh, uh, BS are you going to keep spewing there? <laughs> uh, that could be a factor. Uh, let's see, test problem-solving skills and ability to handle problems under time constraints and, and minimal prep. Yeah, so this is a big one, obviously. And a lot of military training is uh, geared around this, or uh, if you want to go into police work, uh, emergency crews, um, 
you know, medical stuff. A lot of it is not, you know, how would you handle yourself given the perfect scenario when, uh, you know, you're fully rested and you got all the right equipment there and, you know, <laughs> it's, there's no weather to deal with. You know, anybody can do well in those circumstances. You know, the, the, real, uh, the real test is what if you don't have the necessary equipment? What if you got to improvise something? Uh, what if this is at a terrible time, worst possible time? Uh, you know, that's my, what, maybe that's what they're looking more for. Like, how do you handle yourself in those situations? It's probably not going to be perfect. You know, I doubt it. Uh, but if <laughs> maybe you can prevent a, fa a failure from being a ca catastrophe, you know, so maybe this just is a small failure uh, versus a total catastrophe. Uh, even that might be uh, actually what they're looking for. You know, somebody like that. It can minimize the damage. Now, yeah, focusing on the future. So what are you going to do for us? Where do you see, if you, if, you, if you get this job, where do you see yourself in five years? You know, and, and hopefully you won't say, <laughs> well, <laughs> now that you mention it, just as, I'm going to, as soon as I get this job, I'm going to start applying for other jobs. <laughs> as soon as I can take that next step, <laughs> you know, boy, I'm going to take it. Yeah, yeah don't say that. Um, you know, instead, you know, seriously, if you stay there for a few, you know, and you never know, a lot of people take a job thinking they're going to move on and they don't move on. <laughs> that, that could be you. I'm not trying to scare you. Uh, just saying, really see this. Think about it. Five, 10, 15 years. You know, what are you going to be doing? What are you going to be doing to train yourself, to uh, improve yourself, uh, uh, to help that company get to the next level? And that's what they like to see. All right, stress. Well, this this sounds like the worst possible interview. I mean, I don't know what I've never heard of this. I guess again, if it's some kind of a, you know, maybe it is like a fire. Per, uh, if you want to be a firefighter, maybe they might give you a real stressful <laughs> interview. I assume they would tell you what's going to happen, or tell you that at least that there's they're going to be testing you, uh, see how you how well you handle the stress. Uh, and I would assume too this would be part of your training for that job, but. So we're thinking about personally, uh, if I was applying for a professor job and I got treated like this and they intentionally made me as uncomfortable as possible, I would, I would say no thanks, you know, thanks, but no thanks. I don't want to work for you people. <laughs> no, this is uh, too much. Um, but your mileage may vary, obviously. And you can see the stuff they're talking about here. Uh, physical stress, I don't know, maybe if it's a a job where you might be lifting heavy things and might have you <laughs> go over there and lift that box. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> uh, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. Um, allows you to answer stressful questions assertively. Uh, again, I'm going to assume if you're in that, this type of field uh, where you would be subjected to something like this, you know, if you're a green, if you're going out for the Green Berets or the <laughs> Army Rangers or something, you know what you're getting into. Uh, you don't need Matt Barton to talk about this with you. Let's see, rephrase questions that put you on the defensive, including legal and sexist questions. Yeah, so if somebody was asking you illegal <laughs> questions, I'd say, yeah, I'm not going to answer that. I, I think I'm done here. <laughs> uh, yeah, we just wanted to see how you would handle uh, No, I'm, I'm getting out of here. Uh, <laughs> see you folks later. <laughs> That's just me, though. Uh, group interviews, um, uh, multiple candidates interviewed at once. If you're going, uh, for, again, for these teacher jobs, professor jobs, sometimes they'll have what they call the, uh, I forget, what do they call it, cattle calls, some some uh, horrible name like this. And they might have uh, 50 people there, and you're on a big line waiting for your chance. And when you get there, it's not just the one person across the desk. It might be two or three people. And for the professor jobs, this is what it is. Uh, that creative job I was talking about, we had, it was on Skype, and they had, uh, I think, three of us doing these interviews. So it could be more than one person. And they tell you a lot of the same advice is there. A little two-minute pitch, elevator pitch. Uh, you want to arrive early so you can meet people. Again, it's not just the one person, so you want to give enough time to make sure you go around and <laughs> meet everybody. <laughs> Good eye contact with everybody. You don't just keep looking at the same person. Uh, try to uh, divide up your attention. You know, especially if they're the one asking the question, obviously you're looking at them. Uh, and you want to make sure you give everybody's question about the same amount of time. Uh, so don't just give a quick answer to one person and then a lengthy answer to another person, because they might end up taking that personally. Uh, participate in the discussion. Don't dominate the talk. 
<laughs> look engaged even when you're not. So it could be a couple of these panel members, maybe they start back and forth with each other talking about things you have no interest in that totally irrelevant to you. Uh, but I guess just try your best to look interested in, in whatever nonsense they're talking about. Uh, don't start looking at the clock or checking your watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, speaking of body language, uh, don't keep checking your watch. Uh, don't be slumped over, that sort of thing. Or don't get too close to them. You know, nobody wants to you up in their face. Uh, be conscious of how you're interacting uh, with other people. So some of this stuff, again, a lot of this is subconscious. You don't mean to do it. You might not even be aware you're doing it. Uh, but you want to be sort of aware of this. You know, if you've got, um, say, three people there, maybe there's a man and two women, you know, make sure you're not treating the women differently than the man or vice versa. Uh, again, try to be equal, <laughs> as equal as possible. Uh, don't look like you find some things more interested, uh, some questions more interesting than others, or you respect this person more than the other ones. Uh, anything like that can cause some, uh, some friction. And I've noticed this sometimes. You know, I've been in that situation where I was the only uh, uh, the only male, and I noticed that the interview uh, ease would just keep. They kept looking at me and making out like uh, like I was the <laughs> the main person when that wasn't even true. Actually, it was uh, one of the women. Uh, uh, one of the women there was actually the decision maker. I was just there's kind of a you know an advisory capacity. Uh, so that uh, that actually cost them the job because uh, later on the you know the uh, uh, this woman I'm talking about said, I, I really felt like this person was deferring to you, Matt, uh, defer, deferring to you too much. Um, and I didn't like that. They're not going to be working with you. <laughs> they could be working with me. Uh, so that cost them the uh, the interview. And so again, just being conscious of this, uh, I'm sure that person didn't mean to come across that way. They'd probably be horrified uh, to, to hear that. Uh, but I'm telling you, <laughs> so you can be conscious of it yourself. Let's see what else. Uh, avoid getting caught <laughs> caught in a combative situation. Yeah, uh, don't if they start flying. If, if the punches start flying, you probably want to leave. Being a little silly there, but maybe some people in the, on that panel don't like each other. Uh, stay out of that. Do many companies use multiple interviews? Yeah, screening, uh, top grading. What is that? Top grading interviews walk job candidates through their careers so far. Okay. Uh, focused interviews focused on one aspect of the candidate's career, and the reference interview checks in on the, the candidate's references. <coughs> All right, so almost done. Sorry about the length on these. I'm trying to make it a, try to rush, but I don't want to rush through important stuff. Uh, the follow-up phone call. Again, you've gotten back home. Uh, maybe they flew you in. You had this dinner as a sort of whirlwind thing. Uh, now you're back and wondering, when should I call? I haven't heard heard from him in a while. You know, what's the uh, the etiquette on this? And then let's see what they say. Uh, show enthusiasm for the job. You know, reinforce all the positive stuff that happened. <laughs> yeah, the negatives. And so if, you, if they did bring up something uh, that's kind of negative, one of your weaknesses, you know, you, you've, you've had time to think about it at this point. So again, you don't want to dwell on it. You don't want it to seem like you've been obsessing over it. Uh, but maybe you could mention, yeah, well, I've, I, I watched some videos. Or I've, I got some books on that. I've uh, been reading up on it. You know, whatever. You're taking some steps to overcome it. Uh, provide information to persuade the interviewer to hire you. And you know, that one's kind of iffy. You know, I think most people's impulse would be to say, you know, oh, by the way, uh, I've had two other job offers. <laughs> By the way, <laughs> yeah, you probably don't want to come across that way, kind of smug like that. Um, but if you thought of something in the meantime, again, a lot of times you're in this interview, it's all, it's a heat of the moment. You're, you're, you're doing good to put two and two together. You're doing good to speak in complete sentences. <laughs> you're so nervous sometimes with these things. But then when you get back, you're on the flight home or the drive home. It's like, oh my God, why didn't I mention X? Why didn't I mention Y? Uh, and Z, you know, all this stuff you could have mentioned. Uh, so just you can take a note of that, and then in the follow-up, uh, you might mention a few things. You might, you know, mention that. You know, hey, I forgot to mention, I kind of had a blank. I didn't mention I took a whole course on that. <laughs> and they understand. I mean, we've all been there. Um, yeah, the written messages, thanking the interviewers. You know, it's a big step. 
somebody has to go through all that hassle of setting up the interview, arranging the questions, taking the time. You know, a lot of us have other things we'd rather be doing than interviewing people. You know, it's, it's not always an HR professional. It could just be somebody like me doing your interview. And here I, I've had to take time out of teaching, out of prepping my classes, out of my, my own research to do this interview. So, yeah, it's nice to have a little gratitude for this. Yeah, thank you, Matt, for doing this. You're really nice. Uh, you asked some good questions. I appreciate your, uh, uh, you know, you're listening to me. Uh, anything like that, it's nice. Uh, remind them what they liked about you. <laughs> yes, I'm that guy that uh, was so good with computers, right? Or, <laughs> I'm that guy. <laughs> Remember me? Uh, I'm the one that, uh, you know, was asking about um, that we were talking that you were, we were talking about the uh, <laughs> the duck hunting. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, use company jargon. I uh, refer to the specifics of the interview. All right, so they might have brought up, maybe they're talking all about assessment strategies uh, in that interview. Uh, so remember that assessment strategy, that's probably not something that you you, you would talk about over dinner <laughs> with your friends. Uh, but if it, come up in, if it came up in the interview, maybe it's a key thing. Uh, so being able to come back to it, say, hey, you know, we, we talked about assessment strategies. I've been reading up on that. Uh, I've learned a few things, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, enthusiasm. So it kind of, to me, it kind of shows enthusiasm that you even wrote a follow-up message. Um, yeah, referring to the next move. So, uh, you know, again, what's next when you come down for the uh, uh, job training, job orientation? What is it? You look forward to seeing them. Hopefully, you'll <laughs> see you'll be seeing a lot of them because you'll be working there. Uh, let's see. Final steps: negotiating. Yeah, wait for the job offer to talk about uh, talk about the salary. So you don't want to be in the interview asking them, well, how much money are you going to pay me for this? You, know, you want to save this for after you got the offer. And then you can say, um, yeah, so you know what the ongoing rate is. You, you've been on Occupational Outlook Handbook site. You've talked to some other people that work there, maybe. That, that would be ideal. <laughs> or other people in uh, other companies that are doing the same kind of work. So you know about what you should be paid. So if that offer comes in, it's really low. Uh, maybe they're kind of what they call, uh, you know, sometimes they do that on purpose to see, is, this, is a person going to take it? <laughs> are they? Maybe they're kind of almost hoping you'll come back and say, you know what, I would like, um, I'd like to talk about this offer. You know, I was really expecting more of, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's thirty thousand. <laughs> I was expecting more like uh, fifty thousand. I think that's kind of the uh, expected rate here. You know, can we do something about this? Maybe meet it halfway. You know, you always want to see if you can get more money. <laughs> At least that's my point of view. I mean, even if, even if I thought, wow, this is really generous. You know, I was expecting uh, only fifty, and they're offering uh, fifty-five or sixty. You know, it doesn't hurt. Why not? Uh, hey, how about 60? <laughs> how about uh, 65? You know, can we talk about this salary? Is, is this fixed? You know, are you allowed to go above this? Um, well, you, why not? You know, you might be worried about looking greedy. Uh, but again, the worst they can do is say, no, <laughs> sorry, that's the offer. <laughs> Maybe you get some promotions later. Uh, let's see, avoid naming a specific salary. Uh, this is an interesting point. Yeah, so if you, uh, I guess if you say, I want 52000 and they can't do that, maybe they'll just not hire you. I guess that could be an issue. Or maybe they were going to offer you more, but you said fifty-two, so they, they feel like they can kind of go with that. Uh, so maybe it would be good to be a little bit vague. You know, I could see this. Um, so maybe if they said, well, you know, how about fifty k? <laughs> you just say, well, uh you know, is that your final offer? Is there a little room for negotiation? <laughs> and let them see what maybe they'll say. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, we could go up to, you know, we could we could probably do, uh, you know, another 5k on that. That uh, could be good. Uh, negotiating the package, not just the starting salary. Yeah. So this is another key consideration too. There might be all kinds of benefits associated with this. Um, you know, you're going to have to pay for parking. Are they going to pay uh, gas? Are they going to help you to move? Uh, all this kind of stuff could be negotiated at this point. You could say, you know, everything sounds great, but, you know, th here's the thing. I'm moving from Tampa, Florida uh, to St. Cloud, Minnesota. You know, that's going to cost me uh, probably probably about a, 
you know, you, you do all the math. This, this might cost more than a thousand dollars to make this move. Is there any kind of uh, help I can get? Uh, a grant? <laughs> you know, anything? <laughs> or maybe there's other kind of budgets. It doesn't hurt to ask. My my attitude basically in life is it doesn't hurt to ask. Uh, the worst they can say is no. Sorry, you're you're on your own with that. All right, final steps. Uh, accepting the job offer. Uh, know what's important to you, uh, for example. Yeah. So this again, you got two or three job offers. You're asking, which one is it going to be? Yeah, this is a big one. Are you willing to take work home? A lot of people don't like this. Uh, they want to work nine to five or whatever the hours are, and then they want to go home, spend time with their family, uh, watch the game, uh, play with the kids. Uh, they don't want to be basically doing homework, <laughs> taking stuff in from the office, or always on the computer answering emails. Uh, so if that's really important to you, uh, that might affect, do I want this job or not? You know, the reality is if you're a professor, you probably are expected to do a lot of work at home. Uh, you're going to be researching, you're going to be doing, traveling, going to conferences all the time. Uh, this, you might have a crisis uh, not, not a crisis, like a medical crisis, although that, that might happen. Uh, but maybe you have to stay uh, after class, help people, uh, that sort of thing. Are you willing to do that? Um, if not, maybe it's not for you. Uh, See, so would you want firm deadlines or more flexible schedule? Uh, me, I like the more flexible uh, schedule, so uh, that I probably wouldn't want to work for a, a magazine or a newspaper where they had to have things in. Uh, you know, to set deadline, if you don't make it, uh, you're screwed. <laughs> and it's not like that usually with an academic article. Uh, you have a lot more uh, flexibility because, I mean, let's face it, <laughs> a lot of this stuff is not uh, necessarily time sensitive. Um, what kinds of opportunities for training and advancement are you seeking? All right, so is this what you want to do for the rest of your life? Uh, or maybe you see this as, as a stage of your career. You know, maybe you're doing this to get some experience. You know, this this would be another factor. So maybe you think, I don't like that area, I don't like that town or whatever, but maybe this would be a good opportunity for me. <laughs> now, obviously, you don't want to tell the employer this, but you know, this could affect your decision. Uh, sometimes a job, um, it, they call them a dead end job, right? I mean, you're just going to be doing that's it. <laughs> whatever that entry level position is, you're going to be there forever. Uh, whereas another type of job you start off as, uh, well, like with this one, you start off being this, what they call, uh, what's the word, it's, uh, a probationary uh, tenure track <laughs> assistant professor. <laughs> so it makes you sound like you've done something wrong for your own probation. But you kind of start off small, and then you get all these promotions, work your way up to, to full professor. And uh, that's a pretty common path. Now, some places it's really, really hard uh, to make those those uh, advancements. Other places it's just kind of a matter of time. Uh, so it's another thing. Like, what kind of opportunities do you want? Do you want a fairly predictable path? Uh, do you want a place where you really have to prove yourself uh, to move up? Uh, hopefully you want, no matter what it is, you want a place where you can uh, build yourself up, right, and, and thrive. <laughs> yeah, where do you want to live? <laughs> If you're, if you're like me, I don't like a big city. Uh, I like uh, not necessarily a, a country, way out in the country somewhere, miles from civilization. <laughs> you know, maybe that'd be good for a, for fun uh, vacation, maybe. But I wouldn't want to live. <laughs> you know, if I don't have the internet, I just I wouldn't want to live there. Uh, climate. You know, this, this could be a factor. You know, maybe people don't want to go to Minnesota because it's too cold. Uh, maybe they don't want to go somewhere else because they just they, they don't like the uh, the politics, uh, whatever it is. You have to be honest with yourself because it's not just the work; uh, it's the area too. You're kind of not just accepting the job, but accepting that town. You know, just kind of a mundane example too. A lot of people here at St. Cloud State they uh, they want to live in the Twin Cities and then make that terrible commute all the way to St. Cloud every day. Uh, you know, that to me would be absolute hell. I would hate to have to do that. Uh, so if I thought St. Cloud, you know, I, 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 I like St. Cloud. It's fine. You know, I'm not going to say it's a, <laughs> a tourist paradise, uh, but it's got, it's fine for me. I like it just fine. Uh, this is 
uh, home for me. Uh, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have taken this job, frankly, if I felt like I couldn't live in St. Cloud and had to live in the, uh, the Twin Cities and make that a huge commute. Uh, but again, that's just my take. I'm just trying to give you some, some of my thoughts because uh, that's the kind of questions you want to be asking yourself uh, when you're making that decision. Uh, plan what to say at time of job offer. So you're going to take it. You're going to negotiate. And again, I recommend you try to negotiate. It doesn't hurt to ask for more. Because once you say yes, then it is too late. You can't say, yes, I'll take the job, and then you know a week later ask for a raise. <laughs> Probably not going to happen. Uh, ask for two weeks to accept or reject the offer. No, oh, I suppose. I guess what they're getting at here, if you applied for three or four other positions, you might want to wait and see what they say. And this actually happened to me with this job. Um, I had a couple other jobs where they were – they hadn't given me an offer yet. They kept they kept saying, "Well, we need more time. Uh, we need more time." And they probably did just need more time. Um, but St. Cloud State was saying, "Look, you know, we need to know. Uh, <laughs> we need an answer now." <laughs> and I was saying, "Well, can I have another week?" And finally, they just said, "No, you, we need the answer now." So I just had to say, "Yeah, uh, okay, I'll accept," because there's other jobs. Hey, I didn't know. Uh, you know, I might say no to St. Cloud, and then these other jobs might not pan out, and I might end up with nothing. So that, that was my situation, and I would much rather have a job uh, than not have a job. Just, I think that's uh, how I reasoned it out. So I just took to this job and told those other folks, "Sorry, <laughs> sorry, you know, I had a limited window. I told you." Uh, let's see, make acceptance contingent upon a written job offer. Uh, again, I don't know. I, really? <laughs> well, I can't say yes or no until I get into writing. Uh, I don't know if I'd say that. To be honest with you, it sounds a little bit like you're too suspicious. Uh, a lot of other interviewers know when you accept a job. Yeah, this is just etiquette. You know, I didn't uh, lead those other people on. I told them right up front. Up, oh, you know, I, I basically emailed them all. I said, "Thank you for the consideration." Uh, I've taken the job at St. Cloud State. You know, good luck uh, with your uh, with your in other other interviews, right? Uh, reread all your materials on organization and competition in the industry. Now, so this is when you're starting the career. So you just want to go back to the notes you took. You might have uh, you might have gone two or three different places, right? And you, stuff is confused. You want to go back, refresh yourself, network with the people in the field. Not just the people at the job, right, but other people doing that kind of work, your kind of work at other places. You know, keep in touch with them. Sometimes this is a great thing when you are on the job hunt and you're meeting other uh, applicants, other people doing the interviews. If you get to know them, you know, well, what else are you going to do? You're standing in line, you're waiting, you're in a reception area. You know, if you're chatting with them, making some contacts, uh, then who knows on down the road? Uh, you might keep in touch with these folks, see how they're doing, compare notes. That could be great. Yeah, talk to the recent other people there recently. You know, figure out how they negotiated everything. You know, where where are they parking? <laughs> uh, how do they work around uh, the deadlines? Now, who should I really look out for? Yeah, being observant. Now, this is key because a lot of people don't want to just tell you things. Uh, they don't want to get fired, or they don't want stuff getting back to the person uh, they're talking about. But if you're if you're paying attention to body language. Uh, sort of listening for tone, as well as the, the words people are saying. Uh, you could pick up on things, and you don't have to be told explicitly. Uh, you can just uh, pick up on it. <laughs> That's usually a lot better uh, than having to be told. We're finding out the hard way. Uh, using breaks effectively. <laughs> and my grandpa, was, he was always going on about this. Uh, you're required by law uh, to get so many breaks. I, I forget what the numbers are. It's like two 15-minute breaks. An eight-hour day, I think you get two 15-minute breaks and half an hour for lunch or something. Uh, uh, so what they're talking about here is don't just uh, go go out and go to a restaurant somewhere and have lunch, for example. Go off by yourself somewhere to stare at your phone for half an hour. Uh, use that opportunity to network with other people and get to know them. See if you can and go to lunch uh, with uh, some colleagues, you know, just anything like that. So you're kind of building up this network. <laughs> what my grandpa meant, though, uh, was really try to get the most out of that break and don't be working 
while you're on break. Uh, his big thing was never use the restroom on your break. <laughs> uh, use the restroom during the company time. And then uh, on your break, you could just go and sit in the, under the shade somewhere. <laughs> That's what my grandpa said. <laughs> I don't think you necessarily want to follow that advice. Yeah, finding a mentor. Uh, so somebody you know there, somebody that's well-liked, well-trusted, uh, that can steer you. Sometimes you get somebody that wants to mentor you, and it's, it's kind of an annoying person. <laughs> they kind of lash on to you. They, maybe they don't have a lot of friends or something, and they're just kind of uh, almost annoying you all the time, uh, trying to give you a little too much advice. You know, so that could... You know, how to deal with that kind of person, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's kinda, I'm sure you've had experiences with that. Uh, uh, maybe not. All right, let's wrap this thing up. Well, uh, ask lots of questions. Yeah, it's a good thing to do when you're starting your career. Uh, you know, is this okay? How do I do this? Don't assume you know how to do something. It's okay to get help. Early opportunities for feedback, right? So before you turn in that finished project and put it on the supervisor's desk, maybe show it to a few colleagues. Say, does this look okay? Am I doing this right? <laughs> That's fine. Uh, be pleasant and polite to everybody, including the support personnel. You know, I, man, I could go on forever about these things. I know we're kind of going over already, but <laughs> gee, yeah, geez, don't get this attitude about you're better than uh, the custodian or you're better than the secretary or, or the... Uh, uh, office administration. You know, that really bugs everybody. Nobody likes to see that. Uh, don't have this feeling of superiority. You know, we're all humans. We're all there uh, do, uh, doing this work. Um, you know, so be a colleague to everybody. Uh, don't feel like you're above uh, anybody else there. Uh, be punctual, dependable, organized, resourceful, and discreet. This last one's key to you know, don't go blabbing. If somebody tells you something in confidence, don't go blabbing it to everybody else. Uh, don't be forwarding emails from people. Uh, te <laughs> use technology professionally. Uh, don't be playing games on the computer. Uh, don't be looking at Facebook all the time. Don't be using your, your um, the phone there for pro uh, personal calls. Or your, your, I should <laughs> flip that around nowadays, right? <laughs> don't use your mobile phone for professional calls unless they say that's okay. If they got a company phone, use that. Uh, same thing with email. Uh, proofread all your written messages. <laughs> Go the extra mile. Yeah, so uh, don't be the person. Don't be the first to leave the office. Uh, you don't have to be the last necessarily, but uh, and definitely don't be the one that's always trying to get out, go home early, uh, asking for all kinds of extra time. Uh, do your share of the grunt work. All right, that could be a big thing. You know, uh, take one for the team, as they say. Uh, volunteer opportunities. Now, yeah, take advantage of some, but don't, again, don't feel like you got to do everything. Some of these places will just basically exploit you because you're the new person and you're doing all this stuff you don't really have to do. So, yeah, take on, you know, be reasonable. Again, this is a good good time to talk to other people, figure out what's what's kind of expected and uh, what is going the extra mile. Because, you know, notice this, go the extra mile, <laughs> not go the extra marathon, right? Yeah, documenting your work, making sure you, you're punched in, you, you got all, uh, keep a little record of the stuff you've done. So, <laughs> you know, if it does come down to did you do the job right, or, you know, you've got your work. Okay, I'm about out of voice here, about an hour and a half. I'm going to stop it here. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, or found it useful. If you have questions, comments, uh, opposing viewpoints, experiences, stories you want to share, any of that stuff, love to read it. Uh, but I'll see you next time.